We rolling? Yep. We're hey going. guys. Hey guys, I'm Timmy. I'm Justin. I'm Nathan. Hold the camera. Nathan's back there running the camera. Today we're, uh, what are we going to do, Nathan? Or Nathan. <laughs> Read it, Timmy. What are we up to? <laughs> <laughs> So we're here at our local ham club and we have some repeaters on site. We thought maybe those ham radio folks among you, so I don't know, I assume most hams are able to see a repeater in their lifetime. Some may not, depending on, you know, a lot of clubs don't have their own repeater or they're individually owned. So. Or if you're new to the hobby. Or if you're new to the hobby. This is a repeater that we spend a lot of time with. This machine is a big part of our lives whether we know it or not, okay. right? It's it really ham is. It's a ham in the Bedford area. So. This is a Vertex Standard VXR7000 repeater. It's a desktop repeater, it says, because everybody has a repeater on their desktop. You could. It, so, you it's could. Perfectly fine um, on a desktop. Yeah, so. One bag we didn't know was yeah, on the list. This we ought to cover here. Um, <clears throat> so, this connects to this. And this has a little board in it, and this is a Computer Automation Technologies repeater controller company that recently went out of business actually. Um, and the cat has an interface for a telephone line, like it's called an auto patch. You can make phone calls with it. That's not something that's as utilized today as it was 15, 20 years ago. It was actually right. very commonly used. I've not, not heard useful. anybody honestly use it in eight or nine years really. But back Tinker. Before <laughs> cell phones were very affordable and uh, way of life, it would have been very useful because it allowed you to essentially make telephone calls and there, from and your there car. there were hams that got their license and solely it was a utility, that was their purpose, was to use auto patches to each their own. But this is wired in through an interface cable and some other odds and ends. And a big part of this, a repeater is an interesting piece of equipment because it receives on one frequency and transmits on another at the same time. There's with the a, same antenna. There's a couple ways to handle this, is with the same antenna and then there's another way to do it where you put them at different heights, which doesn't work as well because uh, when frequencies are close together, they'll cancel each other out. Like the receiver won't receive as well if there's a transmitter nearby. Okay. But you don't get more nearby than one radio doing two things at once. Or in this case, there are basically two radios in here, in my humble opinion. Um, that's where a duplexer cavity comes in. I probably shouldn't have hit that. You can. Very carefully. Easy. But ain't gonna bring it. <laughs> so twist the knob. That's bad. So <laughs> yeah. These. See where it comes or like in. a capacitor, right? Yeah. Down. So, yeah, yeah, that's hooked here. The just, hard, this is yeah. the hard line right of the antenna. So, yeah, we'll um, get a shot to where this goes to. Yeah. So this is an old Wacom duplexer. Um, yep. They're not in business anymore, but they sold an awful lot of these over the years. Um, and they would usually tune these when you purchase them to the frequency you need. And this one's yep. no different. See, it's set for the transmit frequency of 146.73, and the receive what people's radios are transmitting in at 146.13. Yep. One half of this will null out the ability to receive one or the other frequency. The uh, transmit side will null out the 1.3 side so that it's not being interfered with by the frequency coming in and the same for the other, allowing one antenna to be used. A lot of people, this is a duplexer, a lot of people call them cavities because that's basically what it is. It's a big brass cavity I don't know. It's like basically a capacitor of sorts, isn't it? But it's adjusted. Well, it's like a high Q filter, yeah. Okay, yeah. That's, that's where extremely I high Q filter. Understanding amateur. Yeah. But <laughs> <laughs> um, there's a lot of different ways to do this. This is uh, another repeater the club has. It's uh, the 444.057 centimeter repeater. It's pretty much a, a rack repeater in a box. It even has a built-in duplexer because you can build very small duplexer cavity sets. Uh, for 70 centimeters and a lot of the radios just have them built in and this is no exception so we have a third repeater here a lot of people forget about this one it's the 14531 or 431 repeater. yes it doesn't have an antenna that's at a proper height to be very useful but it also has a set of old uh, Wacom duplexers so they're a little different style they're a little smaller I've noticed I don't know why they're different than I the others I don't think they're actually as 
Pi no, of Q, but I don't yeah, think they were that makes that sense stuff, actually. So they're they're close enough. Yeah, absolutely. And that actual repeater works okay closer in. If we got the antenna higher, it'd be great. Yeah. So this one's set up a little differently. It doesn't have a cat controller on it. We have a spare one, but we've never attached it. Um, <laughs> Uh, so, so these repeaters have the ability to run on their own, and that's like the difference here. You'll see that the remote light's not lit on this one. It has it's using its own built-in controller that does like the 10-minute ID and such in, in CW. Courtesy so, tone. Yeah. And it has a simple beat courtesy yeah. tone. Otherwise, it's just a very basic controller. Well, this one in remote can is being controlled more or less by this entirely. This is what it's allowed to do or not do. Yeah, so. No, it's a really <laughs> clean table too. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, that's a quick overview of amateur radio repeaters and uh, other analog radio repeaters work similarly in like the business bands and yeah. uh, law enforcement. A lot of that's become digital today, but here in Ham Radio Land we often still run analog repeaters. That's what these are. So yep. That's about all I have to say unless you guys have something to add. I'm going to show them the antennas. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So He's this is that's the 3 1. Yep. Which is. Oh. This thing there, you can see it there. That's a 3 1. Tell you what, let me walk up to it without falling over in the mud. It's hard to spot in the viewfinder, right? Well, yeah. There you go. So, that's a 3 1 antenna. Notice it's really high above the roof of this thing, but that's where all their coaxes are coming out. And you notice that they travel all the way to there to our small tower. And then, let's see, let's zoom into it. So way up there, which I believe is should be the end, one of those one of those three. <laughs> two. And, yeah, that's a long way up my tower. <laughs> so yeah. We have a good setup because we're on a high hill for the areas yeah. as well. So we also have another smaller tower. Yeah. Well, smaller being not as high up <laughs> that we actually have a. An HF beam antenna, which looks like a big Yagi. You're almost like a giant TV antenna uh -huh. on the top of it. It's like a 70 foot stub. So, yeah, we kind of enjoy out here a little bit. Yeah. A little bit snowy today. Yeah, wow. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, you can kind of see the thing. <laughs> Once you can see the snow falling in the. F oh, yeah, you can see it. Yeah. So that's uh that's an overview of amateur radio repeaters. Just a simple simple ham radio video for especially for newer newer hams I guess. A lot of you old guys know all about it and they're like, Oh, I know more about that than you. Well, you probably do. Yeah. <laughs> Fair enough. We're just here having fun. <laughs> so I guess until next time, I'm Timmy. I'm Justin. And I'm Nathan holding the camera. And this is three old tech dudes. Later. See ya. Later. Well, yeah. Yeah, that's actually a great idea. Take you outside and see the great power out here. Oh, see where we're going. Yeah. Mm. Um, yeah. Get the code on it.